Move over, NVIDIA. There's a new ray tracing king in town. AMD gets hacked and uh, the GT 1630 launched and... <laughs> It's not good. Before we jump into the first thing, we were doing meme review live over on Twitch right now, so you can come join us to meme, rate meme tech uh, tech memes. We're looking at tech memes and then having a ha ha at it. Twitch.tv forward slash UF Disciple. Would love to have you there. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're going to be going over the hottest and coldest tech news that I can find out on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. And today we're going to start off talking about a big shakeup in the GPU market because we are getting the Immortalis G715 GPU complete with really good hardware accelerated ray tracing. You love to see it. This is being brought to you by the former Nvidia acquisition company ARM. Yes, my friends, we're taking a look at GPUs that are likely to make their way into Android phones as well as other devices out there, but ARM coming out with their flagship GPU capable of ray tracing, variable rate shading, new execution engines with 10 cores or more being baked into these bad boys. And if you compare this to the previous generation Molly GPUs, uh, those suck. At least that's the general vibe that ARM gave off with showing off the Immortalis GPUs. Essentially, this is going to make it so that you get much better performance out of whatever mobile device that you're going to be using. It has higher peak FPS per watt. It has higher sustained FPS per watt compared to premium SOCs, SOC 1 and SOC 2, not really disclosing what those are. But obviously, there's been a lot coming out in the market. You've had things like the Adreno stuff coming out from Qualcomm. Samsung was supposed to be decent with the Exynos chips that were coming out with AMD graphics baked in, but those aren't very good. So even though ARM's kind of being a little coy with what these SOCs mean, uh, it probably does still bode well that they're going to be close to the top of the market when it comes to how much FPS you're getting per watt, but then also showing off that they're going to have more than 300% performance improvement in ray tracing with less than 4% of the shader core area used for ray tracing. So smaller area yielding massive results, making it so that you can, uh, what, 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 Kyler, what would you ray trace on your phone? FaceTime calls, yes. Apple coming soon to a, a phone near you. But I'm saying that these new GPUs have been designed with the future of gaming in mind. New complex and immersive AAA mobile gaming experiences will place increasing demands on mobile devices with Immortalis G715 and designed to ensure that the best visual experiences live forever across future flagship smartphones. Seems to be a pretty good device, however, considering the fact that even AMD on their higher end car can't really master ray tracing. I'm not so sure where the benefit of ray tracing on a mobile smartphone comes in. I just, am I missing like a really obvious use case? Am I missing some sort of professional application that I'm just not seeing? What What is the benefit to this that like, they really need to toot that horn? I don't know, if you have any idea, let me know down below in the comments. But Intel tuning their own horn when it comes to their Arc Alchemist GPUs, them coming out saying, hey, we're gonna officially support AMD's smart ass memory with our Arc series GPUs. This is something that Intel has been saying that they would do in order to have resizable bar support on the Intel platforms, but also now confirming that they're gonna play nice with AMD as well, and smart access memory will be supported. But let's see if there's some discounts going on with the crypto stocks market. Bitcoin down 2.2% to be at $20,298. Very dangerously close to dropping below 20 grand. Again, Ethereum down 2.5% to be at 1160 and Dogecoin down 5.2% to be at 6.7 cents. Speaking of things being down, let's talk about tech prices being down. Reese, what you got for us for UFD deals, buddy? Everyone, Reese here bringing you the hottest tech deals out on the internet. Today, we've got a HyperX Pulsefire Dart, a wireless RGB gaming mouse with six programmable buttons, cheat charging, and a battery loss up to 50 hours going for $39.99, which is 60% or $60 off currently. And in case you're looking to build a next gen system, Corsair's Vengeance DDR5 32 gig kit is currently going for $179.99, which is a current saving of 37%. You can check out these deals and more in the link in the video description. Cheers. And here's a deal Reese isn't going to tell you about because it's not one, but there's reports coming out that Sony is looking to get into gaming monitors, not gaming TVs, with some new details coming out on their Inzone M3 and Inzone. M9 gaming monitors that are supposed to be 
Neat? I don't know. There's a, okay, let's let's look at the spec sheet, okay? On the M3, we've got a 27 inch 1080p, 240 hertz, HDR 400 screen. That looks pretty good. It's got HDMI 2.1 ports, a display port 1.4, USB 3.2, a built-in KVM switch. Pretty good on that. The Inzone M9 is a 27 inch 4K display that runs at 144 FPS and has HDR 600 with 95% DCI-P3 color support. It has all of the other same connections including that KVM switch so that you can switch between different PCs or, you know, different consoles for all of that. But the pricing, really rough. The M3 is looking to cost around 800 euro, whereas the M9 is looking to cost around 1300 euro, which is kind of absurd pricing for those spec sheets. However, they do have, if you read at the very bottom, some interesting features that are exclusive to the PS5 and are actually more like TV features, which is number one, having auto HDR tone mapping, and then number two, auto genre picture mode, which will automatically optimize the picture settings based on the content on the screen, which is typically a Again, something that you find on TVs rather than gaming monitors. So Sony's bringing that technology into these in-zone monitors. That doesn't justify the price to me for these. Like I'd rather adjust it manually and pay half the price. Obviously we'll have to see the design. Maybe they come included with the PS5 in it. That would, that would help justify that price. Uh, that's terrifically wishful thinking right there. But let me know what you think of uh, Sony's alleged new monitors down below in the comments. And HTC is allegedly, but really coming out with a metaverse focused smartphone. The Desire 22 Pro is gonna be part of the HTC Viveverse ecosystem. Is that what they're calling it? I just like, I stopped paying attention when the Vive wasn't regularly getting updated. And the last thing that they came out with was this HTC Vive Flow, which they're saying this new Desire 22 actually supported for that. It has okay specs, Snapdragon 695, eight gigs, like it's a mid tier phone, nothing super special, metaverse focused. This rings to me just like the blockchain phone that HTC had a while back, the Exodus 1S. I don't see this really going anywhere. The, the gimmick phones, didn't HTC also do the Facebook phone? They did! What is with HTC doing all of these gimmick things? Go back to the One M8, please. HTC, just give us a, a, a modernized version of that. That's all we want from you, give, to, to give it to us. And some ransomware hackers want money from AMD. They're saying give it to us because they've hacked AMD. They've, they're, they're extorting them for a ransom based on some details coming out now that Ransom House has more than 450 GB of hack data. Now, it's not quite sure whether or not that GB is supposed to be lowercase b, which would mean that it's gigabits of data rather than gigabytes. And that would represent actually a large disparity in how much data they've acquired from AMD. AMD saying in a statement to Tom's Hardware regarding this, that they're aware of bad actor claiming to be in possession of stolen data from AMD. An investigation is currently underway. Whether or not this means that it's confirmed, who's to say? There has been some rumors out there that AMD did get hacked, and this is just the confirmation of this a few months later. But Ransom House saying that AMD has either considered their financial gain to be above the interests of their partners slash individuals who have entrusted their data to them, or they have chosen to conceal the fact that they have been compromised, implying that AMD has not paid out that ransom. Also saying that AMD used passwords like password to encrypt some of its networks and uh, that that's the reason they got in was because AMD had really lax security. So again, not quite clear whether or not they have 450 gigabytes or 56 gigabytes worth of data. Obviously a lot of data either way, but one is a, a little bit more than the other. We'll keep you updated if there's any more developments on this hack. Obviously there were developments that happened with the Nvidia hack where people ended up getting arrested. We'll keep you posted on that as it develops. And we're here to keep you posted on the latest Nvidia graphics card. That has launched as of yesterday. The rumors were indicating for a June 28th launch of the GTX 1630 GPU, the new low end competitor that was supposed to go toe to toe with the RX 6400. And it hurts. It hurts so much. So benchmarks put it like close enough to the 6400. It's it's like, all right, it's got it's got four gigabytes of VRAM, but uh, it doesn't look very good. It seems like a mildly decent low end GPU if it was costing around, you know, 100, $120. But uh, if you look on EVGA's website, they're selling it for 199. 
$199 for a GTX 1630. Not even the RX 6400 was stupid enough to launch at that price. That is absolutely absurd, but don't you worry, it's limit two per household, so you can be sure that you're gonna get this heckin' steal, uh, you know, as opposed to going and getting a GTX 1650 for $180 right now. This is obviously only a GDDR5 version, whereas the GTX 1630 has GDDR6, but uh, I do think based on the other specs, maybe the, the GTX 1650 might be a slightly faster GPU. So the price is, rather weird colorful has said that their price is going to be at 169 which is like mildly better that at least makes it on par with the 6400 but this is just this is a bad showing it hurts this is like 200 dollars evga really yourself what for a 1630 who who's buying this sorry i'm just i'm so flabbergasted i was expecting something a little bit more reasonable. That's what I get for wishful thinking. Kyler, can you come slap me? Oh, he's he's running. Oh boy, he's coming. Oh, he's, oh no. Ah! Oh, oh, he's, he's going on the walls. Oh, the anticipation. <laughs> that's what I get for thinking the video is gonna do something good for the consumer. And that's what you get for thinking I'm gonna keep this episode of hotness going anymore. Come check us out over on Twitch right now for meme review if you're watching this as this video goes live, twitch.tv forward slash you have to skipple. And we'll see you here for hot news tomorrow, my friends.